friend Allie with Potomac Beads, and in this Better Beater episode, we're going to focus on some easy things to make it more comfortable for you to bead. If you're like me and you sit kind of hunched over and bead for hours, you may be looking for some relief, especially if you've become more active for the new year, and try to have some simple seated exercise to make your beading experience even better. So the first stretch that we're going to do is one to help that lower back issue. If you're like me, you may tend to hunch in some relaxed clothes when you're beating. I'm not in exercise clothes. These are not made to be really intense exercises. We're gonna work on that thoracic back bend, turning to the side in your chair if you want to or staying here. You can keep your hands rested right in front of you or if you want to extend them way over your head. Arch back in your chair and look over your head throwing your head back. This will also give a little bit of a bend to the neck as well, but mainly focusing on that lower back, which is also gonna strengthen the back so you tend to have better posture and do less of that arched over beating effect, which is going to add to that pain rather than relieve it. So the second stretch that we're gonna do is we're gonna do some simple shoulder rolls. Think about squeezing your shoulders back and bringing those shoulder blades together on the back which is going to help relieve a lot of that tension. Again, you probably hold some tension in your shoulders, especially with that hunched over beating technique, which is really poor posture. Trying to get rid of it is actually really, really hard. I'm way more efficient and faster beating when I bend over. So I really have to sit up every once in a while, take time and really do those shoulder rolls. And you can also think of this not only as shoulder rolls and squeezing those shoulders back, putting them up towards the ears and shrugging, also bringing your hands down and wiggling your fingers and really relieving the pressure, not just in those shoulders, but also in that lower neck region. So the third thing we're gonna think about is our wrists and our fingers, because these are really, really essential, especially to you bead weavers or wire workers that notice the cramping in your hand. Also, as you get older, you might start to feel kind of that carpal tunnel syndrome. For these exercises, I actually consulted with a PT, a friend, John, who I work with regularly on some of the issues that I have. So I'm going to be doing these that he has given me advisement for all of these different things. With your wrists, you wanna think about really stretching those areas and your hands. Simple things like taking your hands and opening and closing every couple minutes. Even if you want to set a timer on your phone while you're beating to proactively do this before you are feeling that cramping motion. You can also take your hands and pronate or supinate the, the wrist back and forth as you're working with it, bending it along on each side, one side and then the other side. These again take a couple seconds but they can make a huge difference when you're looking and working with your hands. Just like we did the shoulder rolls also, think about doing your wrists as rolls. One direction, then it's hard to work and do that second direction as well to give you some of that relief in those carpal tunnel and some of those jointed finger areas. Number four, we're gonna talk about an area that I struggle with a lot, which is actually my hip flexor and my hip pointer and my sciatic nerve. It's actually what I see John about, so I'm very familiar with these. If you can't do this, you can always do this as a modified stretch. Bringing your knee up, crossing it over your body, and sitting with tall, tall posture. You can even do that back bend for an additional stretch on the side. If you cannot bring your foot up that high, you can extend that front leg and just bring your foot to wherever, mid-shin or anywhere that it feels comfortable. This again is going to offer some relief along that sciatic nerve, which you may feel from that hunched over. These are also great stretches to do if you're driving long periods of time, anything that has you seated. Particularly with beating, again, I tend to hunch my shoulders, hunch my back, and I know that affects my posture and also my well-being and how I feel. Taking some simple things like that knee over on both sides, one then the other, and sitting cross-legged. Again, there's modifications for all of these exercises. And if you want to, you can even list in the comments exactly what you do to help relieve some of that stress on your different joints and bones and areas in your back as you are beating. So the fifth and last kind of series of exercises we're gonna talk about is that neck and the posture that works around with it. We've already done our shoulder rolls, we've already put our neck back and done a lot of that, but we're gonna simply, really, really gently, you don't wanna push down, Put your hand on your neck and just let it sit a little bit to the right, to the left, 
and then some neck rolls. You don't want to think about it as a clock because you don't want to roll your neck around. You want to think about it as kind of a time on the clock. You want to go to that 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and pause while you're doing those neck exercises to offer yourself some relief again because our habit as beaters is to sit completely hunched over, shoulders down, back down, feeling that pain here, feeling the pain here, and really the opportunity to bring ourselves up. One thing you may want to think about while you're doing this is actually raising your working surface and sometimes I even stand to be to offer some relief along what I suffer really with that lower back issue. So these exercises are very, very simple. They can be done anywhere at any time. There's always modifications for each. So if it hurts, don't do it. Figure out another stretch. Google is a wonderful tool. And also, if you already see a PT for something else, like I do for John, ask them for additional hints and helpful exercises to do. You want to be able to do your craft for a long period of time and to not have pain while you are doing it and have to stop because of that carpal tunnel or wrist issues or finger issues or back issues. So these exercises will give you a little bit of a new release on that. Again, remember with all the videos, check out that little button in the corner there to subscribe to get regular updates from us here at Potomac Beads. Also, you can check out in the comments links if you need any beads so that way you can make sure that you have plenty of supplies to try these exercises and see if they offer relief. Also, comment below and let us know some exercises or some things that you have had that you've done that are helpful, like raising that work area or some different things. I've even seen people say that they actually take a belt and kind of strap it around the back of a chair so you force yourself to sit up. So any little helpful tri tricks or techniques to help out fellow beaters is always, always recommended. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy this episode of Better Beater on repeat as you go through and do some reps of those different items.